I'm Mike, this is Film Masters, and on today's episode, we're going to be working on going through the list of all the bits and pieces we need to finish off our apprehension engine. So, first of all, let's have a look at what we need. So, we're going to look at our cello strings, obviously. Now, we need the cello string uh, G and C, which is the third and fourth string. So, getting a pack of cello strings is what you'll need, and they go on to the herd gurdy wheel. They're nice and thick and they're fairly cheap. You get them for around about $4 on eBay. Now, secondly, uh, electric strings is an option for you if you're wanting to obviously have that nice electric sound going um, on your three strings, uh, which is the second or the smaller guitar neck on the apprehension engine. The other option of that is violin strings. So you can get the large ones, make sure they have the right length. Um, you do come in uh, four different lengths. Obviously, when it comes to violin strings, you need the four by four, I believe, is the largest one. But make sure that you uh, contact the seller um, and find out the length of them. Obviously, measure your box and make sure they fit if you're going to use violin strings. So they're the two options. So you can either use violin or uh, guitar for the small neck and cello for the large. Now, another thing we need is rosin. Now, rosin is something that we will be putting on some of the parts to allow our bow to rub against nicely, giving us that vibration. Now, obviously, uh, to put rosin on, you've got to rub your bow. Now, this is a long bow. You can use a short bow. Uh, there is one called a cricket on Morph Beats. Now, morphbeats.com uh, is a uh, independent music artist slash music instrument maker, and he makes short bows called crickets. So you can check them out. They are expensive, though. So uh, you can use a stand bow. Um, or you can make your own if you're into it. Uh, one thing I figured out is you can actually adjust the tightness at the very end of the bow. And that's what this little thing is here that I'm showing you now. So thought I'd just tell you. So if it's the first time you're getting a bow, like it was for me, that's how you actually tighten them. And the bow is obviously made of horsehair. Next, we will need uh, three left and three right guitar tuners. Now these are used on a guitar. Um, you can get them for around I think it was $12 for a pack of six, so three on each side. You'll only need five because we'll need two for the strings for our apprehension engine's hurdy-gurdy wheel. And we need the other three for the electric guitar slash violin strings uh, on the second guitar neck. Now, obviously, make sure that all your strings are metal. Don't get the uh, cat gut or plastic versions because they won't resonate the way we want to. Next is a rosewood mandolin bridge. Now this is adjustable. And the reason I bought this is because one, I noticed that Tony Duggan Smith, who created the apprehension engine or built it, um, he actually has these now on version two. And it's actually a good idea because now you can actually adjust the strings. So I'll be using these or this particular bridge uh, for the hurdy-gurdy wheel with the two strings on it. So we'll modify it slightly, but I'll show you how I do that, um, which will be obviously to take two strings instead of the eight strings that the mandolin has. Now, obviously it will sit on the top here the two strings, so I will make an adjustment to that and show you later on. Next, I don't have this yet, but I have purchased it. It is a top-loading hardtail adjustable bridge, which is for an actual cigar box guitar. Now it's adjustable and we'll be using it for the three strings and we'll allow this to adjust very similar to the mandolin version, but this one is for the three strings so that we can make sure it fits perfectly and we can obviously adjust it. Now, something that is obviously very important for the apprehension engine is the four rulers or rules. Now, the ones that you need to look for are nice metal ones, um, a little bit of bend, but they can be stiff. But what we need to be very mindful of is the sharp edge. Now, the sharp edge, we're going to use fine wet and dry sandpaper and actually smooth it off. So you'll need four rulers. You'll need two 12 inch rulers or 30 centimeters and two six inch rulers. Now for the small guitar neck pickup, I'm going to be using a Hot Rails humbucker pickup. Now this one is already set up with all the wiring in it. So we've got the two Hot Rails, obviously, which is the pickup. I've got this little button here, which is a pre-toggle pickup lever. 
And obviously we've got a volume adjuster and tone adjuster and also a one quarter socket, which is what we'll be using. Now, obviously you just simply put your uh, button on there and you can adjust it, uh, but we will be putting that in when we put it in the box. Also, it has a black earth wire. I'll show you where to put that. Generally, you can hook it up to anything metal, for example, the metal bridge. With the three lever selector, we won't be really using that because we're only gonna be putting the one pickup on it. So I'll show you what I mean when we turn it on. Um, however, we will stick it through just in case you wanna put two on there. And you know what? It's entirely up to you. Again, this is your build. If you know a little bit about electrics, uh, you can obviously hook up two of them. The good thing about this setup is it's already pre-wired so you don't need to wire anything. You can just plug it straight in. Now, another option you could choose is one of these. It's called a three string bass pickup with the input jack for a cigar box guitar. Now these are fairly cheap as well, around about $6. And again, they're very simple to install. They're simply just a matter of making a hole underneath the soundboard, underneath the three strings. So again, this is for the short neck, guitar neck. So the three strings and the pickup will pick up those vibrating of the strings and then obviously you can put it straight into your PC. So it's a very simple option. It's a very cheap option. And funny enough, they're also located on the Apprehension version two that Tony Duggan Smith has created. So if you check out his website, you'll also see that he's got his own version, which he creates from scratch. However, if you don't want to go the electric guitar, a uh, Hummerback pickup version with the hot rails, you can go this version as well. But again, this is your apprehension engine. If you want, you can put both of them on there if you really want to. And that way it gives you more options to get the sound from your apprehension engine box straight into the computer. Another thing I've purchased that hasn't arrived yet is this item here. And it is a Blend 301 Piezo preamp pickup mic and it's used under the bridge so we'll be using that on our hurdy-gurdy wheels bridge this actually cost me only $20 off eBay now you don't have to use this this is an option for you it comes with an equalizer obviously um, but if you don't want to use that you can just use a standard piezo pickup underneath the soundboard and don't worry I will show you where to put it so we've covered everything with the electric side of things when it comes to picking up from the strings. However, what about all the sounds in our box? Well, here is a piezo pickup and it also has a volume control knob on it, obviously, as well as a one quarter inch socket so we can connect our sound in. Again, you can get these off eBay. Funny enough, you can get them really cheap. Now this one's actually damaged, so I won't be using it. You can see the back of it, so it's a good idea to always check to make sure that your stuff is serviceable when you get it. Um, it's got a self-adhesive sticking side on it, which uh, allows us to stick it to the box. If you've got say two or three of them, that should be enough for your whole box. Now, another option is again, getting the same type of setup. However, this one doesn't have a volume control knob on it. It's got the one quarter socket on it, obviously, that you can uh, adjust and screw into the back. So you can plug it straight into your mixer with your preamp in it. Um, and this one's got three piezo mic pickups on it. Um, so there's three, so that's obviously, so anytime you wanna make sound on your box by tapping it or um, dragging something over it or hearing the rulers and so forth, it's always a good idea to have uh, these type of uh, pickups. So they don't actually pick up sound as such like if you were to talk into it. However, they do pick up vibration. So that's what it works as, which is one of the reasons why we put so much effort into making sure that the apprehension engine box was all sealed or the framing and didn't have vibrations in it. I've also purchased this one, which is obviously two. It's got two of the pickups on it. It's also got adjustable volume knobs on it and the uh, one quarter inch socket as well. So we can obviously connect that. So that's another option. So there are different options out there. Have a look to see what's out there and make a decision what it is you'd like to add to your apprehension engine. Now the next bits and pieces that I'll be looking at is stuff that you can buy if you'd like to, however you don't actually need it. Now this is called an EBO. An EBO is virtually an electronic 
bow, which uses magnets in it. It's nine volts. You put a nine volt battery in it. And so the strings actually vibrate while you're rocking it or just sliding it or just holding it over the strings. It's also good for the reverb tank if you're wanting to get some nice vibration coming out of it. Now, Mark Corvin does use it when he plays the apprehension engine. That's why it's probably a necessity in some ways, but you don't have to actually have it. Another thing for the wish list, and again, it's something that you could do via software, and I will show you in Adobe Audition how to do that. Now, this is an actual Mercury 7 by Meris, it's actually a reverb guitar pedal. You can buy guitar pedals for around $40 on eBay. So you can get a small one and I'll show you what a small $40 one looks like. It's this one here, it's called a nano pedal. And I actually got a loopable version so that it actually loops the sound. So I got that one. The other one, which is a Mercury 7, is around about $400. So it may be out of your budget, but that's okay. Again, you can still use software to make the reverb on your computer. But a looper pedal will assist in real time, allowing you to make a track, for example, and loop it. Um, through the actual apprehension engine. So the whole idea behind the loop pedal, um, again, you can use software for this, so you don't have to actually go out and buy guitar pedals. However, if you wanna actually loop or use uh, ambience and reverb in real time, a guitar pedal is definitely a good option for you. Now, this is a one way, obviously, uh, pedal. So if one sound goes in, and then it goes out, so you can play sound into it, loop it, and uh, go out. And obviously, you'll need these guitar pickup uh, cables for it, which you can get from eBay or an online store. Next, we have a reverb tank. Now, the reverb tank, you'll find uh, you can get them as uh, parts, obviously, uh, which are inside an actual amplifier for a guitar. Now, the size of this is 43 centimeters in length, or just shy of 17 inches. And the width is 11 centimeters or four and one quarter inches. It uses a audio coaxial cable, uh, very similar to what you see in the old televisions at the very back before it went digital. Um, and it obviously goes into a one quarter socket like a guitar one or straight into audio. So you can get these from music stores. You can get them on eBay as well. Now this model is a 4EB2C1B. Now you can search for that on eBay. I do believe they were out of stock last time. However, as long as it's the right measurement, so the measurements I gave you, so make sure you speak to the seller and uh, make sure you get the dual spring. So it needs to have the two springs on there. Um, you don't want the single spring because that won't be as good. However, if you wanna do that, that's fine. Also, when it comes to the measurement of it, um, you can get a smaller one. It just means that you'll need to patch it up on the apprehension and your box to make it fit on the actual box itself. Also, you'll need a mixer, so something to get your sound into your PC. We've got two versions here. You've got a cheaper Behringer uh, 302 USB version, as well as I've got the Yamaha MG10XU. And obviously, uh, you can just simply plug it in. So on the red socket, on the reverb tank, straight into an actual mixer. I'm just gonna show you now what it actually, uh, how it works, very simple. He's plugged it in to my mixer. I'm recording the sound and then obviously I'll play it back. So it's very simple to set it up. It's just simply the cable straight from the reverb tank straight into a mixer of your choice. Obviously the two models I just told you about, um, it's entirely up to you. You may have a mixer already, which is fine. And also I'll just show you how the Ebo sounds. Obviously if you just uh, drag it along or if you sit it on there, it will actually allow the strings to vibrate. And obviously I've got the sound a little bit too loud here. I should have turned it down. However, that's something we'll get to when we're actually uh, playing around with it. So that is all the parts that you'll need, the electronics as well as a few bits and pieces. So in the next tutorial, we're going to put our tuners on to our guitar necks and we're gonna start putting our bridges on and then we'll start to wire it all up and get all the electronics in there and uh, start to make the apprehension engine sing. So if you wanna become a Film Master Sub, it is pretty simple. You can subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Facebook and or on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, master.
Grid.